Hey, Tony from Bike Bearing. As the summer season closes and we start getting into the cooler months, we're gonna focus heavily on performance parts. I built out this F-Zero as my testing platform so we can throw all kinds of stuff on it. This is gonna be your guys' suggestions of what to try. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with everything on the site that you can just bolt on to this sucker. And we're gonna give actual data on how it performs. So if that sounds like a ride that you'd love to take, let's roll. Ladies and gentlemen, here is our testing platform, an F-Zero in the dark blue. Now, the silver one that I have has been awesome for the year, so I'm excited to use this as our testing platform. So some test bike features. One of them is the Shimano three-speed controller, which is a brake and a clutch mechanism. Accurate data reading. I put this phone holder on here. Yeah, I had to put a piece of plastic on here to raise it up high enough so the phone would clear the clip on handlebars. But this way, we can give accurate speed test readings. And for safe stopping power, line pull hydraulics have done the trick. An engine to start off with is a stage four. I've added the BBR Deluxe expansion chamber on here because that's the one that everybody likes. Uh, just for fun, I put an export as an extension on here to give it a test and see what it actually does. And for fun, I put in this little reed valve intake. It just bolts right on here and it keeps air from getting back to the carburetor. This is a part that we source from Zeta and it's a really cool little uh, device. Along with an HP card because I like those. It has the automatic choke where you, you choke it, you roll the throttle back and it, you know, opens it wide up. It's really good. All in all, a great testing platform bike. Let's roll on the testing. All right, I got a regular intake. I left the HP car. We removed export and the expansion chamber because you need to see the performance of a regular stock engine minus those three parts. So we're starting out with a stock intake and muffler. It had a little bit of a boggy start, but it snaps out of it here in a second. Uh, that's just from the back pressure that the carburetor receives. The exhaust doesn't flow as nice, so it takes a second. But we're better now, up and running. Uh, I noticed the low-end torque wasn't as good compared to, you know, with the performance parts on. So it was a little doggier, took a little longer to get up to the speeds that I wanted, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm adjusting the idle here because it was just idling way too high. So I lowered it down so I'd have some throttle room. So what we're gonna do on this stretch of the road, this is the main road uh, outside the lane from my house. And what we're doing is we are giving it time to warm up with a little bit higher speed. You're gonna see I'm gonna hit almost 30 here. I'm just trying to give it good warm up time. All right, this is the full throttle speed test. So I like to stop up here on the side of the road. This road doesn't get too busy, so I can just pour on the throttle. So let's let her rip and see what happens. Looks like things are good. We're climbing, climbing, climbing. This is a good flat road also. That's why it's so good. Okay, hitting 30. And looks like 32 is really all it would give me. Just topped out right there. So that's pretty good for a stock engine that has barely been run. All right, so now we got the deluxe exhaust on, export, and that little reed intake. Right away, it runs smoother. Of course, it's got that poppy sound, but low end torque is great. It's get, getting up to speed a lot faster. Uh, overall, it's just a lot smoother. So something that I hadn't experienced because I've done so many of these stage fours with just the basic or one, of, one or two of the parts, but this is a time with all three that I'm like, whoa, I really notice a big difference right away. Yeah, 
on this stretch of road it just seems to perform really well consistently I would say that's the best thing is there's consistency so going yep <laughs> We're gonna come up to a curve here and then we go down that hill. It just, man, it just rode really well. All right, so this is that curve. Really zoomed around it, down the little hill. Almost touching 30, yep, touching 30. Nice. All right, we're out at the end of the road. We're gonna do our warm up session. Just giving it almost full throttle. Remember, this is a new engine, so it's gonna get increased RPMs the more I break it in. Nice climb, good warm up. Yep, touching 30 right here. Yep. All right, moment of truth right now. Let's pour on the throttle. I love the expansion chamber. The Deluxe is awesome. I love that little reed intake. It's so much better than I thought it would be. Very peculiar little thing, but it works. All right, climbing. 33, 34. It just got a lot of oomph to it. Feels good. Good acceleration. 35. Again, new engine. <laughs> 36. All right, that's where we top out at. Pretty awesome. Good job. That was a pretty fun test. So let's go over each engine configuration. Now keep in mind, this is a brand new engine. I barely run even one tank of gas through it. I didn't do any port cleanup or anything like that. So really it's a brand new engine. So these results will only increase over time. It'll get faster. So I expect it to reach another five to eight miles per hour faster by the time I break it in. All right, let's look at the differences between this intake and this intake, this exhaust, which is a regular exhaust, or like an MG kind of style expansion chamber. So with this intake, I noticed like air going back and forth and making the carb not run as smoothly. And I had to mess with the adjustment as you saw in the video. So that's where you could tell this little guy came in. It really keeps air from going back in the carburetor. And honestly, it ran smooth out of the box. So when I hooked this intake in there, this carburetor, I really didn't even have to adjust the screw on the side. It ran smooth right away. So I think this is an important piece for getting an engine to run smooth right out of the box if you're gonna run a basic 6680cc engine. Now, as far as the exhaust goes, this one is just your stock one and you use these, like you can dial it in and get it to run okay. But I'm telling you, the difference between uh, like an MZ style expansion chamber, it was smoothness right out of the gate. Again, I barely had to adjust anything. It just took off like it was meant to. So, uh, I mean, that was really the two main differences. Now, the other fun addition I added on here was the X port. Now, I don't know about any increase in, you know, overall top end performance or anything like that, but I will say that anything that will pull heat away from an air-cooled engine, I'm in favor of, and it looks kind of cool. So I think there's a couple things that it is positive for, is that it is an extender for an exhaust. So when I put the expansion chamber on here, it helped push it out a little bit, and that actually made it fit the frame a lot better. And I'm in favor of things that wick heat away from an air-cooled engine. So there you go. I think if you're going to do a new engine and you want to get a low performance right out of the gate, I think add those three parts and you can't go wrong. I hope you like this video. Like it, subscribe, comment below with any of your thoughts on new engines and what are the best upgrades that you guys think because we want to test them. We're going to do that throughout this whole rest of the year. Liz roll. <laughs>